Welcome back, everybody. Uh, this month, we are going to make this parched desert ground material. And, you know, it's got, it's got some very subtle things going on. This, this is an exercise in subtlety uh, because, you know, the, the cracks are super cool and that's kind of what it's mostly about. But the surface, you know, what's going on on the surface is also kind of important because if you look at, you know, these... You know, th these were the images that I was kind of using as my template. But they're, you know, it, it's all pretty much the same color, sort of, but there's differences. And it's pretty much the same flatness, but it isn't because the edges kind of turn up a little bit. Like, you know, the, the, the insides of these um, areas tend to be a little bit lower than the, than the edge. You can actually see it better in this one. So the, 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 there's things that are going on here that are just super subtle and sometimes it's kind of hard to do so we've got these cracks and we've also got kind of divots going on underneath and that's two separate processes this is the finished material here so we've got the cracks that are getting dealt with separately from like the insides of the cracks and then all the other stuff you know the the dirt grain that goes on top of it so you know it, it's not a, it's not a humongous material there's a lot going on in the color more there's more stuff going on in the color here than than there probably is anywhere else and you know that that's where it's kind of the magic comes in and it's you can do it however you want, but there's there's just lots of layers in the color, and I think that that's working best. We've got m several gradient maps here. I don't even know because sometimes you can't get everything done with just one gradient map. You've got to kind of make things that go up on top of other things, and that's really the way it works best. So without further ado, let's go ahead and start making our new substance. And we're going to use the PBR metallic roughness, and we'll call this Cracks. And here we go. I'm just going to go ahead and save this now uh, next to my original. And we'll set this up to 2K. And then the other thing that I have going on in my material is uh, an ambient occlusion. So I'm going to go ahead and duplicate out this base color just to save myself a couple of steps because I'm lazy. And we're going to change this from being a base color to an ambient occlusion and just rename it. Now, I don't have anything set up in here yet, but when this template gets made out, it gets sent out to the renderer. So I'm just going to go ahead and click here in my graph and view outputs in 3D view. And what that's going to do is add that ambient occlusion onto my material, which is why it disappeared. Because right now, with nothing plugged in here, my AO is black. So to make that go away, we're going to temporarily just put a white in here and that'll bring everything back to normal. Right, so now we're ready to start building our material. Okay, so the first thing that I want to do is I want to actually create the, the cracks, you know, the, the main outline of the cracks. And for this, I'm going to come in here and get I believe it sells three. Yeah, this one. And we're, we, you know, like we're most of the way there already. Before we go on, I just want to uh, show you that if we, you know, if we right click on this cells and go to open reference, it's going to give us a read only version because we didn't create it ourselves, but it's going to um, open this up for us. And I wanted to take a, a moment to take a look at this. This is based off of cells one as are all the other, you know, like cells one, cells two, cells three, and cells four are all uh, based off of this original cells. And so that means unless you somehow, well, un unless you actually change the, um, the random seed on any one of them, they are going to give matching shapes. And it's not necessarily important for what we're doing here but it's a good thing to know because sometimes if you want you can match these things up in other words you can use a blend to get like one thing going on here and another thing going on cells three and then blend them up together and know that as you change the sliders on the um 
on this actual thing here, it's going to match up. So like if we put cells four, I'm just, I just want to show, this is actually a really useful thing I've just noticed up because I, I tend to do this. I mean, not in this particular material that we're making, but I found myself more than once using these things together. So I just thought it'd be, it's kind of worthwhile showing you. I'm going to do this opacity at half. So right now, this is set up to the default, which is, I believe, 32. Yeah. And this one, I think, is at 20. Yeah. So if we just go back to this thing and we come back, well, I want to, and I'm going to single click on this one, and we come back and change this to 20, they're going to match exactly. Uh, and you can see how having this one with all its, you know, with all the um, grayscales in amongst these lines can be useful. In fact, I've done it. I've done versions of this material, whether it's lava or whatever, where it, it really comes in handy, knowing that you've got these pre-made things that will, assuming that you, you know, set them up exactly the same, will always give you the same result. Uh, okay, let's get back to actually making the material. I, I, I really did kind of want to take a moment to take a look at that, though, because it's super duper useful. So let's come back to the cracks that we're making. And we've got this cells three. But the only problem with it, really, because it's, it's giving us the kind of cracks that we want, uh, is that they're really super duper even and straight. So really, the only thing that we want to um, do with this is just get them less uniform. Uh, I also want these lines stronger, so I'm going to get a blur HQ grayscale, and I'm going to blur it ever so slightly, which is going to have the effect of thickening up my line. I In my notes, I had it at 1.01. And you'll see that if we plug this into a levels node now, and then tighten that up to get rid of everything but our darker colors, I think it's easier to deal with when you've got a little bit more room. And if we come back to this blur, you can see that by adjusting the intensity of this blur, we're going to adjust the thickness of that line because we've taken out all the, you know, we, we've, we've blurred it out, but then we've gotten rid of the grays. So I'm, st I'm using this to just strengthen up that line. And I'm pretty happy with that size right there. So we've, we've dealt with the strength of the line. Uh, you know, I also do want to bring this down to 20 because uh, I, I, I want them bigger. I mean, like, I want the pieces larger. We now have this, these larger tiles, if you will. But they, like I said, they are super even. And so I want to kind of start now to mess things up. I'm going to get a slope blur, which is going to, it's not going to blur it evenly. It's going to blur it according to another image that I put in here. Oh, did I get a color by accident? Uh, you want the grayscale version of that because we're dealing with grayscales. And now I need something to warp it again. I mean, it's it's not a warp. It, it's going to just blur it. So it's not going to change the shape of these things, but it is going to provide a blur according to this second image, slope image that we put in. And for that, we're going to have to create a second little sort of branch here. I'm going to use fur two. I like fur because... It gives me these cool wavy lines that I don't have to make myself. I mean, all of this stuff, if you, if you want to see how any of these are made, all you need to do is go open reference and click on it, and you can deconstruct them, which is a great way to learn how to do new stuff, by the way. Now, both of these are, are pretty dense. I mean, they're, we, don't, we don't need all 2K worth of this to, to do the job that we need done. So I'm going to come into the output size for each one of these and bring them down to parent minus one. In fact, we could probably even try it going down by two. Let's see what happens. In my notes, I did it just going down by one, but shouldn't really matter. Well, it, it will matter, but it may, it, it'll give us a different image, but it may be something that we like. We can always move it back up again. But because we've, now this is down to 512, so our parent size, we have it set at 2K. 
and this is just going to drop it down by 2, so that brings it down to 512, but I want my stuff to all be happening in, you know, the parent. So I'm going to blend these two guys together using um, a light and blend, I think, is what I used. Let's see how that looks. That's pretty good. And what this is doing is it's giving me sort of these wiggly lines going in two different directions. You know, I, they're not just going horizontally, they're going horizontally and vertically, which is what I want to see happen. And then I'm going to get a levels node to maybe tone that down a little bit. So it's not quite so harsh. And then in my notes, I made it bigger too. But all of this stuff that I'm doing is stuff that, you know, you can adjust to have it look like you want it to look. This I just multiplied by two. And let's see what this gives us here. Wow. Okay. Uh, that's really intense. But it is, well, I think it'll probably be easier to see if we bring this down. So these lines, these wavy lines here, you see how they're being kind of, they're blurring this image. This image is getting blurred according to those wavy lines. So now it's just a question of getting this to look like we want it to. And we're going to do that by just messing around with this stuff. So first of all, we're going to bring this even further down. Yeah, I think I'm happy with that. So the next thing I want to do is, you know, we, we've kind of made the, the lines themselves less straight, but I just want there to be more of a curve to the whole thing. And for that, we're going to need a warp. So we'll get a warp node. But again, we're going to need to warp it against something. And for that, I got a Gaussian noise. And I used it at the default. But again, you know, what we're also going to do is we can bring down the size of this. Because, you know, if you don't need the actual pixels, which for masks, you know, for, for you know, to warp it against this stuff, you don't really need all 2K of it. So why make it process at that, you know, that density? And that's actually pretty cool, but it's not what we want. And we're going to bring this intensity down to where it, it's just kind of making them not quite so square. Yeah, like that. And finally, we're going to create our normals for this using a, a bevel node. And that's going to give us, uh, you know, like the height that we need. And it's going to give us our normals. But obviously, it's going to have to be a very small number. And I actually had it set the size, the distance, rather, set to 0.01. And it is now time to take a look at it in the renderer, because what we're going to need to do is adjust how this looks using this stuff up here. Because we can't really make the, the distance any smaller than 0.01. So we might. it looks like we're probably going to have to widen this line out. But in the meanwhile, let's, where's our normal there? Yeah, you see what I want to, I want to make sure that I've got like cracks everywhere. And we're going to come back to this blur. And all we really need to do is just bump it up just a little bit until we get, until we get the line that we want. I think I'd like to see them more jagged, too, so we can increase the intensity here. And you just fool around with these things until you get them how you want them. Let's see what happens if we tighten this up a little bit. Yeah, I'm pretty good with that. All right, so that's the, the basic crack thing. But you'll notice how they are super flat. And if we come and look at these guys here, you'll notice how when you have cracks like this in the ground, the edges kind of turn up a little bit and the insides tend to be a little bit deeper. And I think that it's a really subtle thing, but I think it makes all the difference 
when you're making this kind of ground because it catches the light a little bit differently. And when you, you know, and, and something like this is really going to be very monochromatic. I mean, you're dealing like beige on beige. So subtleties in the surface begin to make a big difference because normally color is, you know, you, you, can, you can fake a lot with just like color. Uh, but here you've got a lot less leeway with that. So we're going to put in a fair amount of effort to get that very, very subtle divot in between each one of these. And to do that, we have to create another little branch that's still based off of these cells, but it's going, it's, it's not talking about the, the outside, it's now talking about the inside. So we're going to grab another bevel node, and we're going to come back to this warp and we're going to plug it in. Only this time, we're going to use numbers that will allow us to um, deal with the inside. So we're going to go into the negative numbers here for the distance. I had 0.04 in my notes, and that looks pretty good. But it's like super jagged, and that's where this smoothing comes in. And I had set the smoothing up pretty high. That looks pretty good, except it's going backwards because we actually want these to go down and not up so if we're thinking of this as a you know as a height map we're going to need to invert it and it's it's too drastic that you know like this is very black and you know we need to we need to kind of flatten it out a little bit so i'm going to take the levels node and i'm just going to get rid of some of those darker tones and then we're going to get a height to normal. And again, we're going to tone it down. I had it set to a depth of 2.83. So let's start with that and see what that gives us. And so we have this normal here, and then we have this normal here. And we're going to blend the two together using an overlay. So let's see what kind of difference we have in our forms here. Much better. So it kind of dips down, and it's looking more like cracked earth now because it's giving us that nice turned-up edge. All right. So that's going to be our basic um, crack form. But usually when, the, when you have these things, there's, uh, you know, that, that shininess is driving me crazy. I'm going to put a gray in here just to make it not do that. Usually, I mean, this is these are like really wide, and there's there's like no sort of mini crack going on. Um, so I just want to make this a more complicated surface, and to do that, uh, I'm just gonna lay this on top of itself, basically, because I like what's going on. I just want more of it, and I want it a little bit crazier. So I'm going to grab myself a couple of transform 2D nodes. Actually, I'm going to grab one, and I'm going to make it smaller. So I'm going to come in here, and I'm just going to do divide by half. I'm going to plug in my result here. So, you know, we've just made it smaller. Let's, get, let's make ourselves a little bit more room. And now I'm going to duplicate it. I'm going to get a blend node, and I'm going to overlay it. You know, it basically, we've we've made it, you know, we've, we have the size of it, which is why I wanted them kind of bigger to begin with. And what we need to do now is to actually change it up, because right now, it's just tiled. I mean, that's all we really did, but that's why we have two of them. So we can take this now and move it around, and it's giving us a much more interesting surface. Uh, I don't want to turn it because that's going to mess with the tiling, but as long as I keep it at 90 degree angles, I mean, we could switch this so that it's turned at an angle too, and that won't mess with the tiling either. It's really frustrating with ones. I mean, just move it around until you're happy with it. This is much more comp this is now a more complicated pattern, but it's still keeping those, those divots, which is why we wanted to put those in first. Yeah, I think I'm happy with that. We can always move it around later. And then finally, for the normal, uh, for you know, this is, I'm talking now only about the cracks. We're going to be adding more things to it. I want to sharpen this up. So I'm going to grab my sharpen node. And I had this set to three in my notes, but 
I think now I want to see this skinnier. So I'm going to come back here into my blur and I'm going to bring that down a little bit. And then maybe bring that sharpen down a little bit. You know what? I think I'm going to stick this sharpen node. See what happens if I stick it on... No, I'm going to leave it where it is. Okay, I'm going to tone it down a little bit more. Yeah, it's kind of hard to go any further without adding color to it. But the surface looks pretty good. This is the... You know, we might as well just do the, the black and white here too. So let's duplicate this. No, let's duplicate this and plug it into here. So these now are doing exactly the same thing as these guys. And I'm going to get a blend node. But instead of doing something like a multiply or a, um, a darken, I'm going to just go into the opacity and just cut that down to about half so that the, the, the actual quality of the line changes a little bit so some of it's going to be darker some of it's going to be lighter you know I'm looking at this I want to see what happens if I darken this up a little bit I'm holding down shift and that's just going to move sometimes it doesn't want to do it yeah I think I'm happier with that yeah it's pretty good and I think for good measure I'm going to just put in a levels node in here right now. Uh, I don't know that I'll need it, but we're going to, right now, here's the deal. We're doing the height map. We might as well kind of finish that up because it's going to be the simplest of all of them. The only thing I really want to add to this as far as height goes is kind of an undulation on the ground because right now it's like super duper flat. So I'm going to go get a Perlin noise and I'm just going to bring this scale way down, and that should be pretty good. And I'm going to, well, I don't know if we need a blur. I'll leave it alone for now. I'm also going to get another levels node, which will allow us to kind of manipulate this, because what we're going to need to do is kind of blend the two of them together and make have them make sense. And we can do that using multiply. Okay, so what we need to have happen is these cracks still need to be appearing even at the lowest areas. So the cracks need to be the darkest thing of all. I'm not seeing much in the way of undulation. So I'm going to see what happens if I maybe move this up a bit. That's probably better. What do I have this height set at? Oh, okay, I'm going to set this up to 1. And I think I will adjust this a little bit. It's not quite so flat anymore. Okay. So this is our height done. We might as well draw a frame around it. Now, for the normals, we still need to add sort of grain to it. You know, we've got the we've got the macro stuff done, but we we need like sand grains, etc. And for that, we are going to start a new little branch. And we're going to base it off of a dirt. And I used dirt one, but it's very large. So we're going to need to do a bunch of things to it. First of all, I, I don't really need it at 2K. And I'm going to bring its parents, I'm going to bring it down to uh, 512. I'm going to get a transform node. And I'm going to make this so that it's relative to parent, which is going to just take this image and it's going to bump it back up to 2K for me. It's just going to be fuzzier, that's all. But I don't really care because I don't really need all that detail. I just wanted to bump it up my, you know, I just want to bump up my sand grains a little bit. So I'm going to bring it down. I clicked on divide by two, three times, and I'm going to get a normal. And that's very, very chunky. We're going to bring it way down. And let's see how that looks overlaid on our normals, just to give us an idea. So we're going to get another blend. I'm going to set it to overlay. Bring that down. 
down a little bit. Okay, now it's better, but get back to our reference images. I don't know if these are very good, but in my experience, um, the areas on the on the insides, because I've seen I've seen a couple of these in real life in my day, um, on the insides here, it's going to be a little bit flatter because it's it's more weathered. Um, you have it's like little puddles. It, it it just they tend to be flatter, and that's so that the I want my normal to be masked pretty much by what's going on here in this mask that I made for the divots. And we've already got an inverse here, which we're using for our normals, but we're going to go ahead and use the, um, no, we do want the invert. We want less normal in those areas. So I'm going to take this one and I'm using it as a mask. And that's going to tend to flatten out the, the grains in the areas that are most covered by, that are, you know, that are mostly um, in those depressions. In fact, I think I want even more, so I'm going to add a levels node in here, and I'm going to accentuate that. So I'm starting to get a much more uneven distribution of those grains. Might be easier to see with a color. I don't want to do the color to last, because we're going to use a bunch of the masks that we're building right now. It probably just makes it easier to see this way. Yeah, I think that's pretty good. The other thing that I want to add is kind of larger areas of dirt that just kind of have nothing to do with the cracks. So whether they're pebbles or sort of discolorations or whatever, but just like anomalies. And we're going to go ahead and use the same mask here. And instead of making it smaller, we're going to bump it up. So we're going to multiply it by two. And then I'm going to get a levels node. And we're going to create a mask that we're going to use for this sort of surface noise. So probably something like that. You know, not too much, but just, just so it's not like completely the same. And we can use that as a mask for, let's get another height to normal so we can give these some bump and we can lay it over what we've got going on here I don't know if I'm gonna like this let's take a look that's too much so we're gonna do something else we are going to change these levels just less of this stuff that's better Yeah, okay. Yeah, so I mean, it's, cause it's like it's not perfect, right? It, it, it has to have some kind of something to break it up a little bit. Anyway, you do it how you want to do it. I'm going to do it like this. Okay, and I believe that's, that's our normals done. So I'm going to make a frame around these, and we're going to call these normals. So the next thing we're going to deal with is the roughness. And it's pretty much repeating what we're doing here. So I'm taking these three guys here. I'm going to duplicate them out. We're not looking at this in here. What we're going to be doing is basing it off of the bevel node that we made for the actual divots. So we're going to base it off of this guy right in here. Now, normally, where are we? base it off of this. It's going to have its own levels node. Normally, um, when, when I do roughnesses, if you've watched any of my videos, I tend to have like the lower areas, the roughest, and the higher areas, the shiniest. This is not one of those times because for these kinds of things, if again, if you've ever seen these cracks, the, because they're flatter, um, the insides tend to be a little bit shinier than the, than the edges. So we're not actually going to invert this. I'm going to get a levels node here so we can adjust it, but we're going to keep it, you know, the, the lower areas are going to be shinier, and then we're just going to replace these guys in here. So we're going to do exactly the same thing to them. And 
the other thing we need to do now is to bring in our actual cracks so th those are absolutely not shiny and we've got I'm trying to think of which one I want to do it off of um, we're going to do it off of this final node here for the height I'm going to get an invert grayscale and I'm going to get a levels node and then we're going to blend that over oop it's not a blend node we're going to use a lighten blend so I'm double clicking on the blend I'm single clicking on that levels and we're going to make it wider that looks about right I mean we're still going to be adding stuff well we might as well do it now with the um, dirt So here, I do want the tops of the, um, of the grains to be shinier than the bottoms. So this we're going to do the way that I normally do it. So I'm trying to think of which, okay, that's, where am I? These are my grains, and I'm using this as the height, so I'm going to want to invert this, and then at the same time mask it out with the same mask that I used here, which is this one. Did not mean to plug it in there. I meant to plug it into the top. Now, I want these white cracks to go on top of that. I want that to be the final thing, so I'm going to plug it in the middle here. And that looks correct. So let's replace our dull gray with that. Uh, yeah, I'm pretty satisfied. Okay. I mean, you might want them... I mean, I, I kind of like them shiny like that. They could be maybe a little bit less shiny, but I'll leave them for now. And this, then, is our roughness. We'll draw a frame. And... All that leaves us with is then the AO before we move on to our color. And that's going to be pretty straightforward. Uh, let's get an ambient inclusion. And I'm going to get a normal to height, HQ. And we're going to take this normal right here, our final normal, and we're going to convert it to a height. And then we're going to plug that into our ambient inclusion. And then we're going to adjust this because it's completely insane right now. First of all, um, the depth is low. So I had the height depth set to like 0.01. Yeah, which is what it ends up being here. Maybe 0.02, your call. And the other thing we want to do is make sure that we set the GPU optimization to true. Yeah, it's getting there. Yeah, we can fool around with it. I mean, it's somewhere low. It's not, it's not going to be a big number. All right. So now we're ready to deal with our color. Okay. So for the color, I think I mentioned in the beginning, uh, we're going to kind of do a, a separate gradient map for each one of these sections, if you will. So the first one we're going to look at is going to be the the majority of the of the floor space here is the actual divot etc we're going to get a gradient and then we have to decide what we're going to plug into this gradient i'm debating i think i'm going to take it off the the normal map no no i'm going to go off this original one no let's do let's do it off one, once we've done the levels okay Let's get into our gradient map. I think I'm going to plug in the color because it'll just make it easier to see what we're doing. And we're going to keep this simple. Let, let's um, pick some colors that we like. All right. I'm content with this. 
like I said, beige on beige. So there, there's enough of a difference that, that it's giving it some sort of undulation. But yeah, okay, so that's the first color done. Only here's the thing. Uh, what we're going to want to do is actually base it off of, I just realized I based, I based it off the big map, not the little map. That's okay. That's easily fixed because all we need to do is just copy this out. I'm even thinking, yeah, we need to do it. It needs to have its own thing. Okay, so um, I'm just going to copy this out, duplicate this, plug this in here and plug this in there. And that's going to give us the exact same colors, just it's actually going to match what we have going on here. I was wondering why it looked kind of funny. Yeah. Okay. Now, the other thing we want to do is kind of accentuate these cracks by giving them their own color scheme. Now, you know, I could, I could just do, I mean, this is why I wanted to do it on two separate gradient maps, because I don't want like the cracks to be all the same color. I just kind of want them to be darker than what's going on on the surface, but at the same time, like have a variation in color. So I'm going to get another gradient map. So I'm going to duplicate this one because it's already kind of got the browns that I want. And instead of using the cracks, I'm going to go ahead and use this very fine grain sand one. But what we're going to do is just give it a completely different set of colors and it's all going to be dark. And I'm pretty sure I can use this one right here as my mask, as the well, as a basis for my mask. I'm going to grab another levels node and I'm going to get an invert grayscale and I'm going to get a blend. See what happens if we use the larger one. All right, so let's come back into our gradient and get it to look a little bit different. And we can add some points in here so it can, it can break it up a little bit. I mean, they're all going to be dark colors, but it means that it's not like... It does, it's not like, the, you know, dark black. It'll go from darker to lighter to darker to lighter. And it just gives, again, it's something super subtle. I think the whole thing can go a bit. You know what? I'm, gonna, I'm sick and tired of move, like fooling around with these um, gradients. Very often what I'll do is I'll get like the basics of it done. And then I just do a hue saturation lightness node. And I can just globally mess around with the whole thing. And I'm going to pop one of those on here, too, because we'll probably want it later. Because what we're going to end up having to do is kind of, like, play all of these masks off against each other. This one, we're going to, we're actually going to put stuff in between here, I think. Because the other thing that we need to do now is uh, get some color variations in our dirt areas. And in, actually, are, I think we're already, no, we're not dealing with it in the dirt areas. We're just dealing with it off the height. And then the other thing we have is like these pebbly areas. So those are actually off of these two masks. So we have, we're going to have to do a color off of this one and a color off of this one. So again, I'm going to duplicate these out because it, if we do, if I keep duplicating out this gradient map, I know that my colors are all matchy. So again, the dirt, we're going to want that, well, I don't think we want it too dark. So I think what I'm going to do is actually copy out this gradient map. Is it the same? It's the same map. Okay. Um, let's just get it more complicated. Okay. So I kind of like that. And So this is the mask that we use for right here. Okay, getting there. And the last thing for our color are these like anomalies or pebbles or whatever you want to call them. And those we're going to put on top of our dirt. So we're going to duplicate. I think duplicate, well, let's take a look at the mask we're going to be using. I don't think there's much variation in here. 
Oh, there's some. Yeah, okay, let's go ahead and use the one with, I'm, I'm thinking about like this gradient. I already went and had, I already took the trouble to put all these other points in here. Uh, so I think I am going to duplicate this one. And we will use this. And we want to change the colors. I want to get rid of this dark altogether. You know what? I think I like the spread. I think we're just going to get an HSL node and mess around with it that way. And we're going to use this mask. And now I want to come back and look at these colors because these color these colors I do actually want to be the most different. But I think I am going to do it this way. So I'm going to actually change the hue on these. Wait a minute. Doing the right thing here. Yeah, they're changing color. And I think I like it lighter rather than darker. I think I want to give it its own levels mask, though. Ah, wrong one. I don't want to mask out quite that. I don't want to mask out quite that much. Okay. Yeah, that's better. Um, I do want to put some metallic in here. I like putting metallic in my dirt uh, just a little bit because if you think about it, most dirt does, in fact, have some, like, wee traces of metals in it. So first, let's finish up in here and draw a frame around our color. And the metallic's going to be super easy because I might as well just do it off of... Well, we're going to combine these two. Um, since I'm here, I'm just going to join them up here, and then we'll move them down. I want a levels node for each one of these guys, and I'm going to blend these two to give me my metallic. And it's going to change the color, and that's one of the other reasons why I like using it. It, it kind of makes your color, if, you're, if it's not shiny, it will actually deepen your color. Now, obviously this is all wrong because there's a lot of metal in here. Um, so this is for our pebbles. And we'll use a lightened blend here. And then this will be for sort of the overall ground. So every once in a while, there's like a little spark of metallic. You know, so depending on how metallic you want your pebbles to be, you can tone that down or bump it up. But it does richen the color up a little bit where it is. I'm, I'm calling this done. I think it's pretty good. Now, because of the skills you have learned at Pixel Gym, you can take this material and actually, you know, make it uh, procedural. I mean, and, you know, all of these things here, like your cracks, you can expose these so that people can change the size of them and all this. So, you know, th this is just a basic material that you can go ahead and do with what you want. But I think it's a good start. So that's it. I hope it's been helpful, and I will see you in the next video.